All right, Amanda, you got me working my tail off on a Friday night. But what else you going to do in a pandemic, hey? So this is the answer to this first question here. Uh, some confusing notation, but I'll do my best to explain. You did have the right answer chosen. So um, this is Riemann sums with limits are just notation for integration. So the N becomes a K, but that stays outside and you integrate the K to the fourth. So that becomes one fifth K to the fifth. Now I would assume you understand some integration in the power rule. Um, you need to. So when you integrate, uh, it, so Riemann sums are involved in this, you know, the left-hand sum, the right-hand sum, trapezoidal rule, midpoint rule, Simpson's rule. It's just that the, the definite integral lets the N go to infinity. Anyway, all of it's involved. What you have to do here is you have to use the power rule to integrate k to the fourth. So the power rule says go to a power one higher, that's k to the fifth, and then you need a canceling factor of one fifth. Because when you take that derivative, it's five times one fifth k to the fourth, which ends up being k to the fourth. You need to understand derivatives and integrals to get what I just did. And then you go from zero to four. Well, the k to the fifth cancel. And so you just have 243 over five with no substituting to do. The zero and the four, if there was a k here in here somewhere, and those k to the fifth didn't, didn't cancel, then we'd have to substitute four in and evaluate and zero in and evaluate and then subtract them. So you need to know how to do definite integration. So that's that problem. And I, I might be assuming too much. Um, this is how to, okay, so yep, this is a, a definite integral here. And it's just what I explained. Let me get my overhead back here. So you need to know the power rule and how it works. And uh, let's see if you put an answer down there. You did, it was 18. Let me get that back up here. That is correct. So I'm assuming you probably understand the power rule. And so there's the work. Um, you can stop the video. I'm going to move on so this video isn't real long. But just sub one in, get that result. The four plus two thirds is what you get when you put one in. And then you subtract the result when you get when you put in negative two. Okay, next problem um, is this one, which is the geometric interpretation of an integral. And so how interesting. And so that's actually a good problem because, and you did get the right answer, if that's the answer you pick. So um, here is my crude printout. Let me back up just a skosh here. So put vertical lines in at, at negative, um, well, wait a minute here, from one to seven, I'm sure what had to be negative four. I think I just wrote that wrong. Let me check real quick here. It is from negative four. I just wrote that wrong. So negative four to seven and put vertical lines in and then you're just doing these areas. So I looked at this big rectangle, the six by two, that's 12. This triangle up here is four by two, I'm sorry, um, four by one, which is an area of four, but we divided by two or multiply by one half because it's actually a triangle. So four times one over two. And then this area is of this triangle is one times two over two, which is one. And then this triangle has a negative effect as you subtract the area under the x-axis. So that's uh, four times two over two, which you subtract four. So 12 plus two plus one minus four equals 11. All right, next problem is this one. And the left-hand sum 
Okay, let me get my, uh, I don't think you had an answer there. So you do probably need some, so this is like a way to, um, you know, that first problem you had when N was going to infinity, it's the same N here and see N is one, two, three, four, five, six in this problem. And so you draw in six rectangles with the end point for the height at the left hand end on the function. Then you draw the rectangle to that height. And so if it fits underneath, like you see here, then you have to subtract those areas and then you just compute the areas. And so they actually gave you a pretty easy one because the widths correspond to the scaling on the X axis. And so all you got to do, you can see that this is one times two, this is one times three and a half or so, uh, one times four, one times two, one times one, but in the negative, and then one times two and a half. So you make the height to the left hand endpoint on the graph. And then if it's going under, you subtract that. And then that sum is eight. So if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, now there's an infinite number of rectangles and they would all fit under there perfectly. And so that's what that first problem was getting at. It was a little confusing with the way they posed it, uh, but that's what it was getting at. So that answer is eight. Next one, um, I disagree with you here. So it's just putting a constant in, which means you just multiply. Um, let me put my overhead. So there's no switch, unless I'm seeing it wrong. I don't think I am. There's no switch of limits. So it's just, it's gotta be negative five because um, you're just throwing a constant in there on that. So I'll stand by that. Uh, next problem is this one, which is real easy. I didn't think I need to show my card on it. It's just, they didn't even make it hard. So zero to six, so zero to four and then four to six, you sum those two together and it's gotta be six. So you got that one right. Um, very, very simple problem. And then the last one is a little bit of a, <laughs> a fun exercise here, but I, of course, am a geeky math person. I actually have a math library and in that math library, I can do Riemann sums with their pictures. How cool is that? So to make the long story short, so here was the function, five times the sine of the square root of Q or X or whatever you want. Five rectangles are drawn, and then we're going from zero to 10. So here's your picture. So this, the width of each, um, rectangle is two, uh, so that's this two right here. And then you need the midpoint because you gotta do F of the midpoint. And F of the midpoint, so one goes in and then three goes in and then five goes in and then seven and then nine. And you're doing all of that, multiplying by five um, each time or you can factor it out and then by two. And then that sum is 32.32. So each of these, the left hand, the right hand, the midpoint, the trapezoidal rule. So that would mean that you put the endpoints in like a trapezoid. So like this one would be down at zero and this one would be up here. And then you draw this goofy trapezoid looking beast. Um, and then there's uh, Simpson's rule, which I'm not sure if that's parabolas or what, but there's, so it's just ways of making rectangles, which is, I like the best trapezoids, or I think Simpson's rule is, is deals with parabolas. It's weird. It's been a long time since I've done it. All right, there you go. And uh, I'm pretty sure I'm right on all of them.